So that overlays our mission and what we're trying to accomplish. And I'll show you how the system works. Um, you'll see it's a satellite that have uh, a number of steerable beams, and each beam has very high capacity, uh, fiber light capacity. Each beam can put through about 1.6 gigabits of capacity. Uh, and as the satellites go around the Earth on a very simple orbit, they can steer that capacity to the location that needs it. For instance, in this case, we'll focus on Africa. If Ghana wants capacity, we can pick up a beam in Ghana and put it, link it to Spain. And then as the second satellite comes along, what will happen is there'll be a, a handover where two paths to Spain are, and then from Spain it goes right to the London Exchange. And each satellite has 10 forward beams and it has the ability to connect up to 10 locations back to the global internet. And so it creates this connectivity between the global internet and each of the locations that we're serving. And it can, as the satellites go around the world, it gives the ability to connect locations everywhere. So we have a couple of, we formulated this into a couple of products which are, are fairly simple. The uh, one product called Quick Start has, has become very popular and that's, what it does is it gives you an STM1 or higher of capacity. Uh, it just is a ground station that anybody can buy and uh, will install and make sure it's working and, and it connects you just from the teleport up to the satellite and back down to the modem. And the telecom carrier just has a, has an R, a port that they plug into. So it's a very simple process or product uh, and allows people to connect very, very easily. And there are other ways that people are using the system and it might be useful. Uh, cellular backhaul in enterprise, you can connect up to 20 megabits. And again, this is all low latency. So this is all fiber quality. And you can just connect from the satellite down to any number of, of towers. And of course, dynamically allocate the bandwidth among the towers. And the, the purpose of that is to allow, in the case, for instance, where we've been spending a lot of time in the Pacific Islands, to allow many of the rural communities and the outlying areas to, and islands to get connected equally to the main island. So all of us can participate. Another technical way that it can be used is in a loopback. And this is a 60 millisecond link up and down for a voice call, where the MSC or the headquarters, the main, main offices might be in one part of the beam, and then all of your BTSs will be in other parts. So this connects up everybody together. So we've seen the coverage area, and the mobile backhaul is a big area that we're trying to help in enterprise, and we're also trying to do this for IP backhaul. The terminals, just quickly, is the three and a half meter terminals, or the antennas that you put at the cell tower, I mean at the telecom uh, core networks, or at the uh, fiber landing station. We find many people want to use this as a resiliency for their fiber, where they may have only a single string of fiber, and in order to maintain the uptime that they need for their economies, they'll use this as a backup. And then cellular backhaul in enterprise is about a 1.5 meter dish, typically. The ITU requested us to, uh, to talk to them about producing a plan for the Pacific Islands, a way of um, helping to reduce the cost and uh, sort of meet the needs and address the needs of the specific, specifically the Pacific Islands. And so we've been working uh, on a proposal, and this is at the proposal stage right now, and we'd like to get your input. Um, we are still almost two years away from launch. We're uh, uh, end of Q4 next year. And of course, we have our, our, we're selling now, we're selling earlier, and part of our mission, of course, is to keep the cost down. So we're pushing to keep the price as low as possible, and also, of course, meet the banks that are funding us on the debt side, uh, about the obligations that they've given us. So we found, uh, and, and, and we look for, um, so far people have been very responsive to the needs that, that we all have in order to get the system going. And uh, we're trying to, and this is an indication of an idea, and we're willing to, to talk to everybody, want to get everybody's input on it, of what we might do for the Pacific Islands. But it meets our budgetary needs that the banks in, have, have put on us. Um, yeah, this idea came from that there's 22 island nations within uh, the Pacific Islands, and the cable's been too expensive for many of them. And even when it does get run, it turns out that the cost per megabit is very high. And then, of course, to have a really robust infrastructure, you need two cables, and that doubles the cost. And in many cases, the cable will only reach the capital. 
but it doesn't reach a lot of the outlying islands or the rural areas. And so this is, again, an objective that we talked with um, about trying to accomplish and, and really reach into the most remote areas with fiber quality. The islands, in many cases, are too far for microwave. And, and then many places that have fiber will also rely on geo satellites in order to reach the, the outlying islands. And then, of course, lastly, is that the idea that nations should spend their, their funds on internal development. The telecoms should be spending the money internally to reach out deeper into their rural communities instead of spending just large amounts of money on, on, on one cable. So in, in the plan that we're proposing and that we're working on, and we'll be talking about this at the uh, interministerial meeting in uh, Tonga in February, um, typically an STM1 to each island, uh, up to 20 megabits to any outlying islands, 122 milliseconds of latency, same thing as we've been talking about with a 99.5% service level agreement. And we've come up with a pricing proposal on it that we're, we're discussing, and that's $600 per megabit. And that would be for the core networks um, through that period. So we're working on that. We're talking about these things, and we'd like to get everybody's input on this. And of course, there's, a, there's an activation fee that helps with the equipment. But this is not finalized, and we're looking for input. Uh, the, we're hopefully going to have a final proposal for, uh, for February for, for the meeting in, uh, in Tonga. Just to give you a quick example of, of how it would work on some of the islands, and, and this is just, we've just picked some islands and, and uh, the representative of the functionality. So we, we have in total, the system will have about 30 gigabits of capacity over the Pacific Islands, which can really be used in, in, in any way we, we find to at least meet the objectives of the banks, of course, to, to, to be paid. And you can see we're fighting hard to keep the price down, and, and we need everybody's input and help on that. Uh, we can reach all the islands. We have enough capacity. In this case, the Pacific Islands benefits because while Africa and other places have huge land masses, the land masses of the Pacific Islands is much smaller. So as the satellites come around here, we've got a lot of extra capacity compared to the, to the population size. So we can reach each and every island. We can reach all the outlying islands. And uh, I was in a conversation recently. I was looking at... Uh, uh, I think it was Wallace and Fortuna, and there was a small little island with a population of 750, and they said, no, you can't connect that. I said, well, if they want it, they can just drop a station in, and their health center or their school or their civ whatever civic body is there can have, can have a couple of megabits or 20 megabits of that fiber quality. It's really easy for us to do. I'll give you an example of uh, Pompeii, for instance, in, in uh, Federal Straits of Micronesia. You can cover the center, and then you can cover all the outlying islands. Or in Czech, you can cover the center island, the main island, and all the outlying islands. And these are, again, just examples of even smaller islands and bigger islands that we can connect up and have them really interact and, and work together, collaborate at these low latencies. And then Yap, and just another example, the Marshall Islands, we can reach each of them. It's very, this is the beauty of satellite. And then New Caledonia, of course, we can reach all the out, outlying islands and uh, provide a backup service as well for for fiber. So that's the constellation. It's very simple. There's, uh, there's no magic to it. It's, we have a lot of frequencies that's been allocated to us by the ITU. We've got very inexpensive satellites. The satellites themselves cost about $22 million each. And that, uh, that's a new barrier for, for price points on satellites. And that gives us the ability to bring very high speed connectivity at very low speeds, very low cost, excuse me. So these satellites are in production right now with Tala Selenia, and, uh, and they're on track, um, and all is going well for the, with the production. So we can scale the system. As people need more capacity, we can increase the amount of satellites in the ring. And as you can see, because of the cost of the satellites, we can continue to bring more capacity and maintain it at a low price. So that's uh, O3B Networks and where we are. And uh, really appreciate your support and your help in the project so far. It's been, it's been great, the governmental support we've received from the French government and the Italian government and the UK government and the Canadian government and the US government and uh, all the other governments. I want to say thank you for that, because this really is a, a service for all of us. And uh, I want to thank you for having me at Pacific Telecom. <laughs>